Good morning, folks. Flag flips back proper today. War mode engaged. Explanation coming at the end of the video. Stick around. Right now, let's run down the top science of the day, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. The last day on the sun was quiet, minor pop at the southern active region, but no more significant flares or filament eruptions in the Earth's direction. The solar wind was the story, but not the story it could have been. The second rise in purple, the one this morning, was what was expected yesterday. Instead, the plateau gave the magnetic field a breather, and geomagnetically, Earth is handling this very well. So we go to that big story yesterday, the Earth spot formation upon the solar flare. The Weather Channel kept up all day, marking the rapid intensification, and now the ultimately higher power forecast for the Earth spot storm. Hope you caught that part of yesterday's show. Up next, in a quick cool note on the discovery of 142,000 year old shell beads. In that particular subfield, it is the oldest of such archaeological discoveries. Fun science fight up next. This paper in 2020 sparked a bunch of the scary climate discourse they forced on the masses on TV. But this last week, a bunch of different teams came with problems to their analysis. Rare to see a paper struck down three times, and as the scientific community is recognizing, even their response. It's not going to erase those issues. Also, it looks like we have a new Earth safety mechanism. We have gone over the number of ways that heating induces cooling on the planet, but here, the intensification of the water cycle concurrent with that warming is now shown to increase ocean heat uptake, taking a little bit off of the atmosphere. It's not as robust yet as the melting ice triggers super snow concepts, but this is a good one we'll keep our eye on. Small astrophysical catastrophist note here. We do continue to watch them spotting surviving stars of even the biggest nova. It's very fun to watch them here go through why their models make little sense and then try to work around it with various scenarios. Such is the damnation of these papers. They can get out the key observational data, but they better play ball in the conclusions if they want to get published. Sticking with catastrophe, but focusing on paleomagnetism now. Issues found in RPI measures that will undoubtedly have had massive effects on paleo intensity marks used by many scientists and in publications across the world. And to complement that, the most undeniable aspect of the last catastrophe, the Younger Dryas and Gothenburg magnetic excursion, does not show up in the climate data used in this thesis, even if the deposition rates did show the change. Not saying it didn't happen, it was a remark on the surprise that their coveted methods could miss undeniable events. This one didn't miss it, and it also shows how the microbe in question is temperature insensitive, another break from the idea that a bit of warming will kill the ocean. Add this bacteria to the krill, chlorophyll, and phytoplankton, also breaking models and thriving, and do it around the Younger Dryas. And with that, let's go to the last two great disasters recorded in the Mediterranean. Both the Lake Mungo excursion event and last glacial maximum and the more recent Younger Dryas event are showing up here. And this is the fifth time in the last year we have seen the heat peak identified as literally right before we plunged into cold. Sounding familiar? Sort of like what's happening now and what will happen next. But now folks, the flag flips and distress signals become war cries as the Arizona audit is the topic here, but the topic isn't politics. The facts of the audit are key but I'm not discussing them to point at a winner or loser or cheater or whatever. Folks, the media is lying. I don't care if you like Trump, hate Trump, don't care or whatever. The audit results are plainly being lied about in the media. I've seen a good bit of coverage on Gateway Pundit and a tiny smudge on OAN, but beyond that, the audit literally shared tens of thousands of examples of voter fraud, far more than the margin by which the state was decided. Again, I don't care which side you are on. This reporting is psychotic. They did a recount of the ballots, and then they went into the issues with the ballots counted. Every other article is either making up results from the audit, or they're only sharing the recount numbers, which Biden won, but that was before they went into all of those that should not count due to fraud. Folks, the election is not getting overturned. Neither is Arizona as a state. That's done. But still, the proof was delivered, and it amounts to more fraud just from Maricopa County than the winning margin in the entire state. The media is in fact lying, and this is the worst cover-up I've ever seen on anything ever. Whether you are right or left, this is sinful, treasonous, where's-the-rope sort of stuff. 
I suggest major media outlets consider those words over the next 24 hours. We greatly appreciate your support. Our website podcast, Fly on the Wall Today, is going to be on fire. If you aren't a patriot, I wouldn't bother. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.